Hi, my name is Ajwa Mirkua Ampuma. As we all know, Ghana is in economic difficulties. As a matter of fact, our debt is beyond sustainable levels. Reason for going to IMF for help. As part of Ghana's preparations towards getting a deal with IMF, the government has come up with the Domestic Debt Exchange Program. The question we are asking, bearing in mind that over 70% of Ghana's population is below the age of 35 years, we want to find out from the youth their understanding of the IMF conversation, its implications, and how best as a country we can carry the youth along the IMF journey. Have you been following the IMF conversation? Yes, I've been following the conversation. Yes, I have. Yes, I know about it. Yeah, I've heard of it ongoing in the country. Now, IMF and Komo Yokosu, what TV? Actually, I've been in I don't know anything about it. I don't know really much and what is really going on. Oh, me none of you are seeing me. I don't, I don't know anything about the IMF. No, please. Concerning the discussion, I have no idea. Looking at the things the finance minister was talking about, honestly speaking, um, I was really lost with some of the terminologies he was using. So I don't really get the whole concept. I don't quite understand what is happening. Yes. I've heard about it, but it's scanty. And recently, did you listen to the finance minister's address on some of the structures they are putting in place, like the domestic debt exchange program? Yeah, I listened to him, but all that he was saying wasn't really clear to my understanding. Um, so I know it's a debt restructuring program that um, the finance minister announced during the budget reading last month, and it's um, something that's going to help with our debt sustainability so that we can find ways to get more revenue and reduce our expenditure okay um from what i've heard on social media from people talking about it talking about your investment what you've invested in the bank um the possibility of you losing your investments as i mean high the debt restructuring where we're going to cut off interest and other things pertaining to money and investment of people's um monies in order to generate more funds to take care of our domestic debt so that we can be able to go out for foreign debt as well. Actually it's to uh, as in going for funds to just um, as in as to uh, I don't stabilize the and the, the prices. Okay. I understand the domestic debt exchange program it's going to affect literally everybody here in Ghana. One is going to be zero um, interest rates on um, investment products like um, treasury bills, among others. From my understanding, I I know that we are. So if you have any um, government bond or treasury bills, you are not going to earn any interest on it for 2022 as well as 2023. I heard that from a particular period ongoing. I wouldn't get any interest on my investment. So as an IT person and a young man, I think um, this economic hardship is going to increase a lot of cyber threats in our country because um, the youth will not have any meaningful job to do and then the, um, people can lure them with money to venture into cyber um, crime which I think will be a big blow to the economy. Okay, so I, I don't think it's the best policy because if you are going to cut off our interest as a young as a young person who has money to save for years, if I have plans of doing something and now you're going to cut off my interest because you owe so much, which is something I don't know how you even got there in the first place, then it's not being fair to me. Whilst you could have used other means of catering for your domestic debt then i think it's not best because it's going to create um, a set of youth that we don't know what the future holds for us so we are willing to do anything possible even if it's illegal to get whatever we need to be able to survive so it's not the best policy for the youth that are coming up maybe for the politicians it's good for them but we as the youth is very bad for us how do you feel about that i feel angry mm. very angry as a young person who has started working and then I've been able to save money and then all of a sudden I don't even know the context, the premise within which these negotiations were made. 
Amandi. And with a little security background I have, I am much worried about how frustrated the youth are going to be. Yes, because um, if we don't manage this particular situation very well, it is feared that the security of Ghana is going to suffer some severe setbacks. I have a mutual fund with Data Bank and um, Data Bank takes this savings and that of its other customers and it puts it, um, it buys some of the government treasury bills and so it means that my interest for 2022 as well as 2023 i'm not going to get it and for me that is worrying because mutual funds are meant to be um, short-term investments to defray certain costs so i'm now wondering to myself when it's january when i'm about to you know renew or do that payment how am i going to do that now because the money is locked up over there i may get access to it but i may not, I may not get it at the rate at which i thought i would get it me for instance if I am to save some money in the bank as a stance, I would rather keep it or use it for another venture okay. because there will be no profits coming from it or the profits I should be expecting wouldn't be what I'm getting. So the implications are a lot. It's, it's yeah, a lot, a lot. Talking to some Ghanaian youth, we call you Jews that not much is known about IMF and the conversations surrounding it. The question we ask them is, how best as a country can we carry the youth along the IMF journey in making them understand everything they need to know and the conditionality surrounding it, how does it impact their lives?